Good morning. We're back to Sunday school. And I wanted to take a different setting and give you a little different perspective on having Sunday school because one, you have been saved. Two, you should study. But three, God loves you. God is taking care of you. God is providing for you. As a matter of fact, God loves you so much that he not only died for you, but he is making intercession for you. Now, that's kind of an interesting term and an interesting idea, and we'll get to that later in the study. Or not today, but we'll get to it eventually in the studies. But as a basic believer's class, because you've asked Jesus into your life, one of the things you should learn to do is begin to enjoy life. <laughs> in other words, don't sweat the small stuff. There's a lot of things that people are going to tell you or get carried away about. They get excited about different things that they are interested in, but you might not be. They may worry about things that you don't have that worry. You see, if you've learned to ask Jesus for everything, if you've learned to trust him for anything and everything, that really is going to cover everything that you're ever going to learn for the rest of your life. Now, you're going to spend the rest of your life learning to trust him and learning to ask him and learning to walk and talk and live and be with Jesus. But that's one of the reasons why we have Sunday school. But in the meantime, I just wanted you to, I wanted to express that to you about relax. Remember, God is with you, God is for you, and God loves you. So, on the one hand, don't take that for granted because you do have an adversary and an enemy. But on the other hand, make sure that you enjoy what God has given you, which is the gift of salvation. You now have the opportunity to spend time to learn about God and to discover who Jesus is. As you grow in this knowledge, you're going to be changed slowly but surely. Some things will happen on the surface that look like they are pretty much set and you're you know, pretty much excited about it. But you're going to find also that in your life, trials and tribulations are going to come up that are going to challenge you and question and make you question your own faith and whether you are saved. And that's why we have Sunday School. But remember, the main point today to walk away from this entire overview is to relax, enjoy it. Jesus is with you. God is blessing you. God will keep you. Just continue on in the Word continue on in Sunday school and continue on in praying and reading and studying his word. So let's get into it today. We're learning from usage of, and we went through the syllabus last week so you could check back on the previous tape on the Sunday school, and the syllabus pretty much described the entire book of the Handbook of Christian Maturity or a handbook for Christian Maturity by Bill Bright that we're using from the Jesus Movement. Bill Bright was one of the people who started Campus Crusade for Christ. As he did, he saw that there was a need for training, discipleship, and discipline. So as he saw that need, he met that need. He went ahead and went out and developed materials for specifically those people that were in college that were assembling together in order to study and to be really followers of Jesus in a more intimate and personal way. And so we use his material in order to give to you a Sunday school lesson that will take you all the way through the rest of your life. It'll be pretty long. I mean, I can't remember how long we have it for, but we already pretty much put that on the tape, so you'll see it on the intro. But what we're doing today is that because we've already given you the syllabus, the basic table of contents that we looked at, we're going to get into now the introduction. We're going to just kind of relax, you know, take it easy. Don't chill. You know, you're going to get to your work. You'll have homework. You'll have things you need to do, things that you need to pray, things you need to follow through with. But for now, relax, get a cup of coffee, sit back, enjoy, think about these things, and ask the Holy Spirit right now to teach you, because he can give you ears to hear what it is that you need today to hear from him. But he'll also give you things that you're going to need to understand for the future. So that way you'll go on a consistent basis growing in the knowledge of Jesus. So let's get into it right away and just begin to go for it. You know, because this is Sunday school, and after all, you are here to learn. 
any introduction, inquisitive, intellectually minded, concerned people investigate a great many things to varying degrees, but frequently give little thought and even less time to Bible study. Yet the Bible undoubtedly has had more profound effect on history than any other book. It has played a major part in the development of Western culture, influencing national and international affairs, and affecting even matters of everyday life in ways in which we are not aware of. In order for any individual to be properly informed and well educated, he must have at least a general knowledge of the Bible and its teachings, hence our Sunday School class. That knowledge can be acquired only through carrying out a consistent plan of study. This Handbook for Christian Maturity is designed to give you an efficient means for a systematic study of this Christian faith as taught in the Bible. This course consists of a broad survey of Christianity. It will give you an understanding of the nature, privileges, and responsibilities of the Christian way of life. It also discloses the secret of available transforming power which can be enable you to live the life more abundantly. In this study several things will be emphasized. The distinctiveness of Christianity. There is a breach between God and man which Christianity calls sin. No religion makes any provision that is acceptable to God for that breach. Christianity, however, does provide for it. Not in what man can do for God, which religions attempt to do, and which is never good enough, but in what God did for man when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. The distinctive claims of Christ. Many people feel that Jesus was only a good moral teacher, but this study will make clear that he claimed to be no less than God himself, to be deity. He is either the true God or he is a liar and an imposter. The abundant life God has for every Christian through the power of the Holy Spirit. The lives of many people have been utterly transformed through an understanding of the doctrine of the filling of the Holy Spirit. See step three and we'll get to that, the Christian and the Holy Spirit. But as an introduction, they're mentioning it. First, your study should communicate knowledge. Without a knowledge of at least some biblical teaching, no one can become a Christian and no Christian can live a victorious life. That's why I always say, when people argue about religion versus relationship, well, religion brings you to a relationship. And if you're in a relationship, you will have a religion. So really they go hand in hand. On the left hand you have religion, on the right hand you have relationship. Together, cooperatively, they work in your heart to form that with which you give to God your life. The benefit from your study therefore should be twofold. First, your study should communicate knowledge without a knowledge of at least some biblical teaching. No one can become a Christian and no Christian can live a victorious life. And a great many people reject Christianity and a great many Christians are miserable, defeated, and frustrated simply because of ignorance. The psalmist said, The entrance of thy words giveth light, from Psalm 119, 130. And Jesus taught that the truth shall make you free, in John 8, 32. Hmm. Looks like a misprint. Secondly, your study should communicate power to your life. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible differs from all other books. It is a living book. And though the life and power of God are communicated to the life of the individual, in it, that is how God will speak to you often. Men and women by the thousands, including Augustine, Luther, Wesley, and many others, have changed history because God used the Bible to change them. As you or your group begins to use this handbook for Christian maturity, or in our case, Sunday school, as a guide for your study of the Bible, you undoubtedly will become aware of a number of changes coming over you. 
you will be shown how to receive Jesus as your Savior and be given an opportunity to invite Him into your life if you have not already done so, or if you would just simply like to do it again. <laughs> and again, and again, and again. If you have already taken that step, you will probably notice your Christian living becomes more consistent. You will grow in love for others, your devotion to Jesus will deepen, and you will have a sense of an increase in your desire to share your faith. If you're a new Christian, this handbook is designed to help you gain a good general knowledge of the Bible, acquainting you with the major doctrines of the Christian faith. It should assist you in some spiritual growth and help you find the solution to the problems you face. Everyone will face problems every day. We all go through situations and circumstances that challenge us. As we develop in our relationship with the Lord, the Lord develops us into our relationship with His Father. And He perfects us and makes us into the image of what He wants us to be. If you're an older, more mature Christian, you will acquire the tools you need to help another person find Jesus or to help a weak Christian grow in his faith. Your own commitment will be affirmed and intensified. And you will have an effective devotional and study plan. I'm watching in a moment, hold that thought for a second, I'm watching my camera to see if it's going and blipping quite a bit. It looked like it was changing, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. But because it's Vidigo, and we go ahead and go through with the Sunday School and with Vidigo Church, we're not too worried about when we have kind of those issues with the camera or we don't have a perfect video, because this is free, and freely you receive, so freely give. A faithful study of this handbook for Christian maturity will prepare you for a more comprehensive ministry, giving you a thorough understanding of the biblical principles upon which your faith is based. And it will show you the way to continual appropriation of the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling you to live a more joyous, triumphant Christian life. So in other words, before we get into the instructions, which will take... Okay, we might want to skip the instructions. We'll save the instructions for the next one, and then the summary will begin the beginning of the classes. So the next one under instructions will begin to get into the meet and greet, so to speak, of how we'll be doing what we're doing. And it's kind of interesting because one of the things that I've always wanted to do when it came to sharing these things in Sunday school was to have a way of looking at that which would help us every day when we go to Sunday school because there's so much that people talk about that when I went to Sunday school I went to a community church at one time that wasn't a Calvary Chapel there was no Calvary Chapel in the city there was no ministry coming in it was the early days of the Jesus movement and I had just left Calvary and I had gone to a place where there was nobody doing anything nobody had even heard of Calvary Chapels much less the Jesus movement and so I went to a community church that I was very much interested in. It was a small town, a small community, and the pastor was very intense. He, he would meet with you. Imagine that, a pastor meeting with you. He would sit down and have a Bible study with you in order for you to join the church. Imagine that, a pastor on a Bible study. Matter of fact, I'm pretty impressed with Calvary Chapel Boise, I think it is, and some of the other Calvaries that have Bible studies for you to join their church, to become a part of the membership of the body of Christians there. And I'm sure that if you join a church in that kind of environment, then you begin to become involved in like helping each other out. So like, you know, if one man suffers, we all suffer. If one man's exalted, we're all exalted. Not kind of like the, the pew and do, you know. It's like you just sit in the pew to do what you want to do, you know. That's why we call it the pew and do, because pew, you, you do do. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because you just don't really get involved, you know. It's kind of like you're just fluffing stuff, you know. You're just kind of there. So Sunday school is kind of taking you to a place where you're getting into the nitty-gritty. You're beginning to get some guts and some glory. You're beginning to get real with God and say, Hey, I want to know what this cross is I'm supposed to be taking up. Sunday school is one of it, part of it. And that's part of what you're learning and discovering and beginning to grow into. Becoming less of a babe sucking a thumb and more of a child learning to walk for the first time and talk and begin to grow. And that's what I want to see 
So much so for just not only baby believers, but mature believers. Because I've seen more mature believers that are thumb-sucking than I've seen, quite frankly, baby Christians who are quite mature in their relationship with the Lord. Often, we're told in the scriptures that a little child shall lead them. And that's because the child has the purity of faith that we all need. They accept what they're told and they believe it. Older Christians often will get a little distracted, a little attracted, a little fleshy, get a little caught up in the world and a little bit, maybe even sometimes, doctrinally off or in some way um, dogmatic about some of the things they thought they knew when in reality the scripture doesn't say those things that are true. So we ought to take from this study on Sunday School the opportunities to write down everything that we're learning. We should have, as it were, in our class, you writing down some moment where you say, ah, this is the point that I want to take home today. One point. Not the entire lesson, not the entire class, but one thing you want to think about for the rest of the week. Because we are doing this weekly, and you'll be doing this for a long time. Obviously, you're going to be given some homework, which is to memorize and to learn some things and to fill out some questions, probably. And as you do those things, then you'll grow phenomenally. But sometimes it's intellect without it being intelligence. And sometimes it's intelligence without it being spiritual. And sometimes it's spiritual without it being intellect and intelligence. You have an intellect, and you are intelligent. You've been given spiritual discernment, and the Holy Spirit will come to you if you ask Him, as you'll see in the classes that will get to that place, where you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you. But for now, just simply say, God, help me. And God will. No matter what your theology is, no matter what your background is, no matter what your doctrine is, no matter what your dogma or religion, you'll find that if you ask God, He'll answer. Because God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. He's not going to leave you homeless. He'll never leave you helpless. He'll never leave you defenseless if you call upon Him. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And you have become, as you are led by the Spirit of God, to find Jesus and to ask Jesus into your life. You have now become, as it were, a son of God. You're growing in this knowledge of this relationship you have with the Father. So, in this Sunday School, as we go through one more, it looks like just one more, introduction, play back the tape and see if there's not one moment or one perspective that you want to grab a hold of and make a part of your life, whether you're new, old, unsaved, saved, or in some way learning about who Jesus is. Because there is effectively God speaking to you today. He has brought you to Sunday School. He is the one who has said you should go. He is the one who is helping you to grow. He is the one that you want to know. And because He is doing these things, there's something you need to do. And that's to learn and to listen and to let Him lead you. Because we all like to take control. We are control freaks, every one of us. We want to control our lives, we want to control our emotions, we want to control our devotions, we want to control our ministries. Any way, or shape, or form that you look at it, in some way, you're a control freak. You have not learned yet how to give up and yield up all parts of your life. Because frankly, when we do, we aren't watching Sunday School, we're actually making tapes and creating things like this Sunday School video. And you're doing the ministry and the work of the ministry and accomplishing those purposes that God has for you. But as we learn together and as we grow from what the Holy Spirit is teaching me, then I'm sharing with you so that I may learn and develop my personal self-discipline as you learn the maturity that you need in order to grow up or to grow narrow or to focus in or to bring about once again that first love that you had when you first got saved. So let's pray now and ask God to lead us as we go forth after this introduction has been done and accomplished that we might think about these things. We might consider well our ways and we might look at what we're going to get out of it and whether we're going to continue on because it's hard to keep going to Sunday school. At least it is for me. So if I'm here, then I challenge you to be here too. So Father, I thank you for this day that you have given us a Sunday school that you've given us a casual time to start but it's going to get serious real quick 
And you've given us your spirit that we can enjoy each other's company as we begin to grow in knowing you better. Jesus, I ask that you would sit at the right hand of the Father as you have said you have and you do, and that you would intercede on, forever, on behalf of every single person who's watching this video, that they would begin to seek you and ask you for everything, for the little things, for the big things, for the casual things, for the most intimate things, and that God, in your way and capacity as a high priest, you would ask the Father to grant the request to the person so that they would begin to see how personal and real our Father is. So that they would begin to know just how much you want them to grow in knowing you in a more demonstrative, practical, real way. God, right now, I just ask that every single person, as they're listening and as they're praying this too, that one thing that they have on their mind, you would do. And whatever it is that's in their mind, you do it for them. So Jesus, bless them so that they'll continue to come to the Sunday School and learn of you. Because God, if it's not learning of you, then we're wasting our time. But God, if you are teaching us, then I pray that you'll continue to instruct us and you'll lead us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you in your learning, however you choose to do that. But may it be that God bless you, because God is instructing you, whether it be through pressure from the outside or from changing you from the inside. God is going to accomplish his purpose, because he loves you. So remember that. Write that down if you want to as your key verse or your key thought to remember today. Relax. Take it easy. Enjoy what God has done for you of your salvation. But remember, always, in every situation and circumstance, whatever trial comes your way or whatever frustration or aggravation, God loves you.